What's up, guys, and welcome to Scourge of War Waterloo, episode 36, part one. So, uh, from a year ago and all 35 scenarios in the game, we are left with but one. And today we will be taking a look at the Battle of Waterloo from the Allied perspective. It is, again, nine hours long. We command the Army of Low Countries uh, under the Duke of Wellington. And the situation is you rose early and have been writing dispatches all morning. One of those dispatches was to the Prussian Army Commander Blücher, confirming that you will give battle at Mont Saint-Jean and suggesting that if he can just spare one corps, you will have sufficient forces to defend against Napoleon. Otherwise, you will be forced to retreat to Brussels. Thus far, Napoleon has given you the gift of time. Following your old enemy's advice, you have not disturbed him during his delay and will be waiting and willing to receive his attack. And the mission is to hold your ground against the French attack. Alrighty, so let's uh, scroll down here to the map and uh, we will do our little strategy session here. All right, so here we have uh, Wellington's forces positioned behind uh, the Mont Saint Jean Ridge, uh, behind La Hassan and Hugo Mont, in uh, a defensive position here. Um, so to start off briefly, I, I just want to talk about the differences between the two armies, Wellington's and Napoleon's. Uh, now, throughout various scenarios uh, leading up to this, you have uh, already he heard me heap lavish amounts of praise and gush over the quality of the Army of the North. Its artillery, its cavalry, its overall infantry troop quality, uh, you know, I'm you know, was, you know, I'm very impressed with the, the Army of the North. You will not hear me heap such praise upon Wellington's army. Um, <clears throat> uh, it's just kind of a hodgepodge of, of different troop, uh, different nations, just uh, Germans, Dutch, Belgians, Nassau, uh, Hanoverians, British. It's, it's the whole kind of hodgepodge of nations that make up this army. And the quality of the troops is widely varying uh, the british troops are good especially the the coldstream guard they're they're probably well they're definitely wellington's best troops uh but you know they're the aside from the the british troops um which only make up about a quarter of our forces the troop quality is all over the place um you have some good troops level five level six but you also have a whole bunch of you know, really garbage troops level four level even level three like militia troop quality you know just trash troops uh so uh, right away you're gonna have to pay more attention to the troop quality of the units you decide to engage uh than you would with the army of the north where um the troop quality is pretty stable pretty much throughout the the entire army there you know the average troop quality in the army of the north was you know five or six and then uh you know when you got into the the imperial guard then you had sevens and even eights uh which uh wellington has none of he has you know no troops that are that high the the coldstream guard i think are seven but there's there's no eights only the imperial guard has eights <clears throat> um uh, so, yeah, you have to pay a little more attention about to what the troop quality of the troops that you're going to uh, uh, meet Napoleon's forces with. Uh, because we are uh, playing Wellington's forces on the defense, we don't get to pull any kind of um, objective point cheapness like we did with when we played uh, the French scenario. The French are scripted to attack uh, in, in certain ways and at certain times, and you just have to be ready to receive those attacks because they're coming and there's nothing you can do to stop them. Um, so, uh, all right, let's talk about the overall strategy here. Wellington's strategy was not bad at all. Um, certainly he was playing a, a defensive game kind of all along the line here. Um, but we're going to improve upon it a little bit. Um, and that's not to say I'm a better commander than Wellington, far from it. But the mechanics of the game are simply different than what real life is. And so uh, we need to change the disposition of the forces a, a little bit just um, just in keeping with the mechanics of the game and, that are not really like real life is. Um, 
So basically what we're going to do is most of Wellington's army is is out of sight to the French. If you remember when we played the uh, the French, basically this kind of part of it is all we could really see. We couldn't see any of this stuff back here because it was behind the Mont Saint Jean escarpment and and could not really be seen. Um, uh, so unfortunately the 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 French have an enormous amount of artillery set up along the opposite ridge here, uh, along uh, La Belle Alliance, uh, sometimes called the Grand Battery. Over the, the, the hours and hours that this battle is, the Grand Battery will inflict just a ton of damage on these frontline troops. Uh, just because it takes the French war machine a while to get going. They don't always attack right away along the line. Um, they, the attack kind of comes in phases, so lots of there's going to be lots of time where you're literally just standing here, and the, the the guns are just blasting away, and there's like 80 of them out there. It's ridiculous. Um, so rather than leave these troops all in sight, we're going to pull everybody back behind the ridge, uh, and and basically instead of having a line going like this, we're going to have a line going more like this. Basically, everything behind the ridge. And then, because the objectives are on our flanks, we really can't move our flanks. So uh, it's just going to be more con, kind of more concave uh, in in terms of um, what we're going to do. Because we can't really withdraw from the flanks because that's where the objectives are. Uh, but there's no objectives anywhere along here. So we can basically pull all these troops back behind the ridge. It's more important for the troops to the east of Lai Hassan than it is to the west of Lai Hassan. There's really not any French guns over here. Most of the French guns on the uh, west side of Lai Hassan, they're back here. Uh, and they're mostly concentrated on the Hugelmont area and not really over here. Um, so initially, anyway, this area you can kind of leave alone. But everything to the east of Lai Hassan, where... Uh, um, where the 95th Rifles are and, and, and the Dutch Belgians, uh, Bylance Brigade and some of the troops on the cavalry and so forth on, on the right here, they are all within range of uh, the Grand Battery and will just get pounded to pieces if you leave them there. So one of the, the pretty much the first move I make is, uh, well, not the first move, but the second move I make is to pull Bylance Brigade off the ridge and put them down uh, down behind the ridge and just get everybody off the ridge that we can that is kind of in range of, of this attack by the Grand Battery. Now that doing that creates some pros and some cons. Um, the pros are that we're obviously able to protect a lot more of our forces and shield them from the French artillery, uh, uh, thereby uh, preserving our forces uh, for the battle to come. The con is that by withdrawing all our forces out of view and behind the Mont Saint Jean Ridge, we cannot really protect Lai Hassant. And so Lai Hassant really cannot be part of our strategy. If, you, if you're not willing to leave your troops on top of the ridge to protect it, you can't hold it, because all that's out here is a couple of uh, uh, little King's German Legion units. Uh, and uh, at the beginning of the scenario, we will they're in the Orchid. We'll pull them back into Lai Hassant. They'll be able to get some points from it. Uh, for as long as they can before the French decide they're going to take it. But when the French do decide they're going to take it, they're going to take it because we've already moved all our troops off the ridge behind it, out of view, and so we we can't really protect it. Um, so we're basically going to say Lai Hassan is not really going to be a factor in in at least from our side. That's okay because there's plenty of other objectives. Lai Hassan is an objective, but you know, in order to protect it, we're going to have to stay up on the ridge and lose a lot of men to the Grand Battery. So it's like, do you want to protect it and have extra points? Or do you want to preserve your force and let the French have it? Uh, there's so many points on the field that I always just decide why Hassan is not worth it. Uh, let the French have it. Um, because we're going to set up in a defensive formation. And you guys know what my defensive formations are like uh, behind the ridge. So... We don't really need Lai Hassan to kind of stop up the French advance. Let them come, because you guys know what I'm going to set up back here. We've 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 done this before, um, and there's plenty of other points all over the field for us to get points at. Uh, so the two main objectives are the Allied right, which is kind of right here on this kind of this crossroads behind uh, Hugelmont. 
uh, and the Allied left, which is e either right here or just off the map on the Allied left here. Uh, and both of these are worth 200 points a minute. So those are our big money objectives. Uh, we also have um, Hugo Mont, which is worth 100 points a minute. And these woods, I think, are worth 200 points a minute. Now, we can't hold the woods, and I don't even try to, because the, the initial French assault uh, by uh, Bonaparte's division of, uh, of Ryle's court, yeah, they come charging into those woods like a bat out of hell. Um, so don't even try. Use the time that the French are getting ready to make that attack to just get your troops out of there and put them into Hugomont. Hugomont is much more defendable than these woods are, and even more so since... Uh, 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 our, our friend uh, Hook on the Steam forums uh, started digging around in the uh, uh, the SDK files, uh, the Scenario Design Kit, and found the defense values. And we found out that this wall that's in front of Hugo Mont and going around the side of it is just a ridiculous defensive position in, in terms of the amount of damage reduction that it gives. So if you place troops on this wall... They're getting like a 95% damage reduction. And if you use skirmishers on top of that, skirmishers have their own built-in uh, defensive damage reduction bonus. So couple that with like the 95% bonus you're getting from being on the wall. And it's just like, psh, you, you can't hit these guys. You know, it's like you, it's like one shot out of a, a hundred might hit them. Um, and uh, the only vulnerability, of course, is that, uh, you know, they can be, not being in the fort, they can be charged and run off the wall, uh, because skirmishers, no matter what kind of defensive position they're in, if they're char uh, the, if they're charged, they 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 just run, uh, and so that creates some interesting back and forth moments. But um, it's certainly better fighting for Hugo Mont than it is trying to fight in these woods. We're just going to get wrecked because they come charging in there, uh, like I said, like a bat out of hell. Um, and Papalot is also uh, an objective, and I think that one is also worth 100 points a minute. So we have uh, uh, two objectives that are worth 200 points a minute, and uh, another two objectives that are worth 100 points a minute. And Lai Hassan, which we'll be at least get a few hours out of, is also worth uh, 100 points a minute. So the points are just, they're all over the place. They're everywhere. Um, so uh, let's talk about the French attack plan now. Um, uh, usually it's pretty much by the book, uh, and when I say that I mean kind of um, along the historical lines of, of what uh, the French did at the Battle of Waterloo. Um, uh, normally it's uh, Foy's division, uh, I'm sorry, Bonaparte's division of, uh, of Ryle's Corps who will attack Hugomont with Bowden's Brigade first, followed by uh, Soy's division. Uh, you know, after after that, then uh, the the right division of Derlans Corps, uh, Duray's division, they will attack Papalot, uh, and then sometime in the early afternoon, Derlans whole corps will advance uh, uh, down the down the center, uh, and then uh, after after that, sometime between three and four, you'll get a cavalry charge, and then near the end of the battle, you'll get the French Imperial Guard. Uh, and, and, and that's basically the game plan. Um, as far as I know, the sixth core, Lobau's core is always detailed to go to Place and uh, to deal with the Prussians. Uh, so let's talk about the Prussians a second. Um, uh, the Prussians are for the most part, pretty inconsequential to the battle. We can hold Napoleon. Um, so what I do with the Prussians largely depends on whether I get the Grouchy variant or not. Now, the Grouchy variant is not like other variants in the in the game, it, it, such as ones for, you know, Ligny or Quatre Bras, where if you get them, you get a message at the beginning of the scenario letting you know that that happens, that, the, uh, you know, you're, you've, you've rolled the die and, you know, you've gotten your one in six shot and you've gotten the, uh, the variant for... Uh, those scenarios. The, the Grushi variant is completely random and you have no foreknowledge of whether it's going to happen or not. However, the percentage uh, in terms of the chance of it happening seems in it to be to be pretty high. Um, considering I've played this scenario a bunch of times, this is uh, by far my favorite uh, uh, of the Waterloo scenarios to play uh, as opposed to the French one. I, I much prefer playing the Allied one because uh, there's no way to really, I mean, 
we can use some cheap tactics, but there's there's nothing as stupid as like what we did in the French version of the scenario. Uh, you know, the, the the battle actually happens. Um, but given the amount of times I've played the scenario and how many times I've seen the Grushi variant happen, I would say it's it's like it's it's either fifty percent or almost fifty percent chance of it of of it happening, of, of Grushi uh, appearing on the field. If he does, he appear he, he appears from the northeast down this road. Now, because the the chance of it happening is so high, I play every scenario like it's going to happen. It either does or it doesn't, but I always. Um, I always uh, I'm under the assumption when I start the scenario that it is going to happen. So I always detail some of these rear troops here to set up kind of in here uh, on my left flank uh, to delay Grushi. Uh, I don't set up a whole bunch of troops as if I'm really going to fight Grushi, really just to, to, to delay him, because when the Prussians appear, um, if, if I've gotten the Grushi variant, then I just I just grab the Prussians, uh, it's Boulot's core, and I usually just take the whole core off of Take Charge, put them under AI control, and just send them at Grushi. And I don't really care what happens. I never, If I'm going to use the AI, I never do, because the Prussian attack on either Plassenois or on Grushi um, is inconsequential to the battle in terms of there's no objective they're fighting for. Uh, the objectives are all along the Allied lines, and so really all Grushi's going to do is just, I'm sorry, all the, the Prussians are going to do if Grushi appears is just attack him and tie him up and, and, and keep him from interfering with uh, our line, our, our left flank here, uh, uh, so that we can continue holding the objectives. Um, what, other, what happens between the Prussians and Grushi, or if the Grushi doesn't show up between the Prussians and Lobau's corps at Plassenois, I don't really care. It's, it's not by the, it's not important in terms of, um, of, of, of us and holding the objectives we need to hold to rack up the points. Um, the objectives are worth so much in this scenario that, um, it, it, it overshadows any losses or, or, uh, uh, or casualties they take or inflict that the Prussians might uh, might take or deal. Um, so they could go up 5,000 points and who cares? They could go down 10, 5,000 points and who cares? It doesn't matter. Um, so just because I've already got my hands full dealing with holding the ally, dealing with the allied army who is pretty much all TC'd because you, on the defense, I TC everything uh, to make sure that I set up my formations and that they stay that way. Um, so I'm busy watching the allied army. So the Prussians, since what they're doing is so inconsequential in terms of the overall battle plan, and it's really just to either attack Plassenois to keep Lobau busy or to attack Grouchy to keep him busy. Uh, I usually let the AI carry out the attack. Uh, one, it's more exciting to watch because, uh, um, the AI is just crazy in, in the way it executes attacks and it's messy. And, uh, I've often described it as, um, likening it to a, the way a preschooler finger paints. It's just chaos. Uh, and, um, but it's exciting to watch, so why not? You know, it has no bearing on uh, what I'm doing with the Allied Army or uh, really any kind of impact, whether positive or negative, on the amount of points we're gaining from these objectives. As long as we can hold these objectives, we're good, uh, you know, we're going to earn plenty of plenty of points. So what the Prussians do really doesn't matter in that regard. But it is important if Grushi shows up, because if Grushi shows up, we need the Prussians to, to, to take care of him, to distract him, to engage him, to keep him from reaching our lines, uh, where, you know, then it's like, OK, now I'm dealing with Napoleon down here and Grushi up here. And, you know, I'm having to basically commit all my reserves to deal with Grushi. And now I have a, a true thin red line uh, holding the area behind the ridge. Um, and so, uh, yeah, that's basically what I do with the Prussians. Um, it, like I said, if Grushi, if Grushi shows up, he usually shows up first. So by the time the Prussians appear, I'm going to know if Grushi's on the field or not. Uh, and if Grushi doesn't show up, then I just send them against, uh, again, same thing. I just, I put them under AI control and I just say, you know, go have fun, boys. Go attack Blasenois. Um Again, it's not, it's not, um, it's not, 
critical or consequential to the battle up here for us. And uh, it, like I said, it gives us it gives us something to watch. Um, so uh, yeah, that's basically uh, that's basically the battle plan there. Uh, like I said, we're gonna withdraw from the woods uh, and occupy Hugomont, and you make use of the wall. Uh, with skirmisher units uh, so that we can inflict more casualties than we take. Uh, nothing really happens over here. The uh, All that's over here is some artillery and Kellerman's uh, cavalry. It basically sits there the entire time. They're not really part of the battle. I don't think historically they were part of the battle either. Um, uh, you know, we will bring... Uh, we have some troops here. We'll bring some artillery up to support them. And then, oh yeah, one other thing. Uh, off the map here, there's a town called... Uh, I, Sure, I'm going to pronounce it terribly, but um, brain allude or brain allude, uh, and we have um, uh, Chase's uh, division uh, uh, occupying that town, um, and we're going to bring them up. And just because our extreme right here is pretty thin, all it is is these three battalions, uh, so we're going to bring Chase's division and basically set them up back here. Uh, to strengthen our extreme right. And uh, just because that's the only area that we're really, really weak at is just the area kind of west of Hugomont. Um, there's only three battalions there. And even though nothing usually happens, I just never like to have a, a flank that exposed. Um, uh, so, yeah, so we're going to pull the, as the beginning of the scenario, we're going to pull the uh, the King's German units, uh, King's German Legion units back into La Hassan, get as many points as we can from it before the French get themselves going. Uh, and we're going to pull most of our troops here back behind the ridge and set up a defense uh, so that the, the Grand Battery, which fires at you for quite a while before Derlon gets going, uh, so they can't really do any damage to us. Um, and, uh, yeah, the rest I think we can pretty much explain in the scenario itself. Let's scroll down a little more here. Okay. So here's the gameplay. You command the entire Allied army for the entire Battle of Waterloo. There, object there are objectives along your line that represent the historical French attack points. But there is one caveat. You will not know when or where Napoleon will attack you. Will he attack as he did historically or change his plan completely? You must be ready for anything. Uh, and like I said, normally the, the, the majority of the time you're going to see the historical uh, attack plan. Uh, that isn't to say it, it, there aren't some variations, but generally speaking, you're going to see, at least from Napoleon's army, um, the historical attack plan. And the must be ready for anything is probably a reference to uh, to Grouchy uh, appearing, which I can tell you the first time I played the scenario, which was years ago at this point, I can tell you the first time that happened. Boy, was I surprised. <laughs> Didn't see that one coming. Uh, so we have four corps of approximately 73,000 men. That is not including uh, the Prussian Fourth Corps, which will bring our total up to about 100,000 men. We need 100,000 points for a major victory. The highest uh, point total out of any scenario in the game uh, that we need for a major victory. However, it's that high because the uh, objectives in this scenario are crazy, just like they were in the French scenario. Um, but we start out holding them, and we're going to hold a lot more of them than we ever did during the French scenario. However, even given the few that we held during the French scenario, remember, we cleared 100,000 points in that scenario. Um, so uh, it, it, 100,000 points is, you know, it's not as crazy as you think it is. It's absolutely attainable. Um, and again, expect lower frame rates towards the end of the scenario with all of the forces engaged and the dead bodies. Even the fastest computers will experience some lag. Um, doesn't really happen to me. Um, uh, my computer was set up by my brother, who is a you know really smart IT and computer guy, and and he basically bought it all. He bought all the components for me separately, and, and he built the thing himself. And it's uh, yeah, it's a tank. It's a supercomputer. Uh, so uh, I don't really have the problem of of lag, even when there are a lot of forces engaged. Uh, so. Okay, guys, I, uh, I believe that is uh, the end of the strategy session here. Uh, so let's, uh, let's uh, play the video and launch the scenario here.
Alrighty, so it's booting up. Alrighty, and here is the Duke of Wellington with 72,710 men. All right, it says, My Lord, I have your situation report as requested. I received a dispatch from Blucher that he will obey your wishes and support you. The French army has been quiet all morning, but appears to be forming for an attack. I am confident our men will hold their ground against whatever is thrown against them. And that is from Colonel Sir William Howe Delancey, the personal staff of the Army of Low Countries. And once again, all of our officers are on TC. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is grab these uh, couple of King's German Legion units here, as I said in the strategy session, and we're just going to move them into Lai Hassan because that's the objective and we want to start getting points from it. Uh, and they'll also be, uh, you know, a little safer in there. Um, the next thing we're going to do is grab these frontline troops that are either on or in front of the ridge and get them out of there before the Grand Battery unlimbers and starts putting a pounding on them. So we're going to take Bylant and uh, take all his troops off of TC so we can move the entire brigade and just bring him back here in line. And here they come and we will then TC them again so they all just move. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is uh, on the Allied left, we're going to, on our left here, we're going to bring some of these guns back uh, because we need our guns. We don't have as many of them. Nowhere near the amount the French do. So we cannot afford to sit here and duke it out with the Grand Battery and lose guns. Even if we inflict ten times as many artillery losses as we take, uh, which we won't, but even if we did, that's still too many losses for our guns. We simply don't have the amount of artillery that the French do. Uh, so I'm moving uh, uh, an officer near the objective here to take uh, possession of that objective. And I'm moving some of these troops back as far as I can within the radius of the objective uh, to keep them out of artillery fire. Uh, it's tough on this part of the line because the ridge just isn't as defined here as it is kind of further to the right. Um, so uh, now we're going to head over to Hugo Mont here and um, we're just going to immediately uh, uh, grab our officer and TC all our troops. There we go. I'm hitting the TC button. And we're going to get them out of here. Going to send them right all into Hugomont. And we're going to double quick them and move them as fast as we can. We want them out of there before um, Bowden's Brigade gets a move on. Because, uh, like I said in the strategy session, Bowden's Brigade are a bunch of eager beavers. Uh, they are really out to impress the Emperor, and they, they charge into these woods with a head full of steam. Um, very, very aggressive. So uh, we've gotten about 200 points from the, uh, the, the minute or so that we've had this objective, but we've lost six men already from cannon fire. So uh, we're just rushing our men into Hugomont and... Uh, getting them out of there before the French uh, head into these woods here. So uh, here our men are uh, heading back towards Hugomont. Run, boys, run. Get in there. And our, our, some of our men are already dropping. As I said, the French artillery is just godlike. I mean, they have amazing guns. And, and, and plenty of them. Just plenty of them. So we need to take away a lot of the effectiveness of the French guns uh, by really just moving out of range of them and, and, and making it hard for them to get a lot of casualties on us. Uh, because if you just stand anywhere near in front of these French guns, they'll just they'll blow you to pieces. So you can see uh, Bowden skirmishers advancing towards the woods. And his brigade will is forming into column and will begin uh, advancing behind his skirmisher units. Um, but our, our troops are almost all ready into Hugomont. 
Now the next thing we're going to do is bring up one of these uh, one of these uh, Coldstream guard or foot guard units, and we're going to put them right behind kind of the Hugomont area. Uh, the main reason is they're going to be a constant source of sh skirmishers. Um, these skirmishers on the wall here, these Dutch Belgians, these, these Nassau's, or whatever they are, they're crap. They're 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 not good troop quality, and we want to put our skirmishers on the wall and have them be able to stand against anything but a charge. Um, and so I want to get these guys off the wall and use skirmisher units from the foot guards and put them on the wall because they're much higher troop quality. Uh, so in order to delay the, fr the French from engaging these guys on the wall, uh, we're going to take these two little 50-man uh, skirmisher groups of, of the Coldstream Guard and deploy them in the hedgerows here and just have them sh just for a couple of minutes just delay some of the French skirmishers and, and, and Bowden's Brigade is advancing as you can see. Uh, while we try and replace the skirmisher units on the wall uh, with the foot guard skirmisher units and get these guys into Hugomont. So you can see I'm starting to move these guys off the wall and into Hugomont um, while these uh, British foot guard skirmishers here are delaying and engaging the skirmisher units uh, of Bowden's Brigade, who, as you can see, here they come in column. And I'm advancing this Coldstream Guard uh, uh, unit, and uh, that will be the unit that, it's a huge unit, it's like a thousand men, so just imagine the skirmishes we can kick out of that unit. Um, and they're basically, for the majority of the scenario, going to be just that, a source of skirmishers. Uh, we don't really engage the unit, but we just keep deploying and, recoil and recalling skirmisher units as we need them from that unit. So here we go. Temporarily, we have uh, these fifth small 50-man units of the Coldstream Guard in the hedgerows. And we're just using them to buy time so that we can get skirmishers uh, from the, the Guard Regiment uh, on the wall. All right, so they're double-clicking and putting them right up to the wall. And uh, now we'll move this unit off into the into uh, Hugomont, and we'll pick out another skirmisher unit and put them on the wall. Now, sometimes this is all for naught, because as I said, uh, Bowden's brigade comes charging into the woods with a head full of steam, and um, you know sometimes they don't they don't even stop to load their muskets. They just they just fix bayonets. They charge these guys. They'll charge the wall, you know, uh, like a bunch of maniacs. And uh, you know sometimes these guys get run off right away anyway. Um, but I put them. I, I do the switcheroo here at the beginning just in case that doesn't happen. Uh, you know, so I at least already have the, the foot guard skirmishers on the wall. And uh, also, guys, this is going to be, in, like I said, just like the French scenario, it's going to be a five-part series. We did the strategy session, and we'll do the first hour of the battle in this video. And then the last four videos will each be two hours uh, of the battle. Uh, so this one starts at 11.30, and we will take it to 12.30. So uh, here comes Bowden's Brigade. Like I said, they're coming coming right at us. No BS. They're just they're just moving forward. And um, I, like I said, I've played the scenario a bunch of times. I've seen this. I've seen this before. The French start off just really really aggressive. Um, uh, in terms of just trying to charge their way through everything. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much what's going to happen here. So I'm already on the retreat button. I can't recall these skirmishers because these are units that started off the scenario deployed. So the only thing I can do is have them retreat. But nevertheless, I, I retreat. I wait until the French are as close as possible so that they will stop to reform, giving my skirmishers on the wall an opportunity to shoot at them. 
So uh, now my skirmishers on the wall are shooting at these guys. You can see men falling. Uh, but uh, the rest of Bowden's brigade is still continuing to advance. They're still in column, the, and uh, they show no signs of stopping and forming line, which is what I would really like to see. Given the fact that I have this wall, I would much rather be engaged in a firefight. But uh, as you can see, the, the French are just uh, determined, determined to charge. So, uh, all right, that is the second charge for this unit. So, bear in mind, Bowden's Brigade is not the Imperial Guard, so their troop quality is, you know, sixes, good, good solid troops, but they can't charge forever. But here they go again, charging the wall, and now uh, our unit has run off. So they've cleared one of our skirmishers off the wall. We still have one unit on the wall. And we have these guys who have retreated back behind the wall. So uh, now the French are on the wall. So whether you're on the wall from this, this side or this side, you still get the wall bonus. So since they're on the wall, they now have the wall bonus. Uh, we do too, but uh, you know, two walls shooting at each other, it takes a while to inflict a lot of casualties. So, right now these guys are still in column, so they're not shooting, uh, but now you can see they're deploying into line on the wall, and they'll be able to start shooting at the men inside Hugelmont and inflicting more casualties on them than they will take from the men in Hugelmont, because Hugelmont is not a big defensive bonus as this wall. So again, like I said, hyper-aggressive, uh, and now they're charging this side of the wall and knocking these units off. So the French, like I said, they came into this wo these woods head full of steam and just overran all our positions in the hedgerows and on the wall. They have really just just came in and just ran us over like a steamroller. And uh, now uh, all we have between us is uh, um, Hugo Mon. Now fortunately, the buck stops here as far as trying to charge. You the French cannot just charge Hugomont while uh, we occupy it. So now they have to shoot it out with us. But being on this wall, they're going to do better. And they're going to inflict more casualties than, than they're going to take. Uh, that hasn't really spared out yet because they just got on the wall. But, you know, now they've got two units on the wall. So uh, what we're going to do is move our skirmish units and try and start shooting these guys in the flank. And that's why I had another skirmish unit out here, so we can start shooting these guys in the flank as well as some of these guys. We're still in an orchid. That's still a decent amount of defensive terrain bonus, uh, and we're we're pretty far away, so that we're not going to take a lot of casualties. However, these guys are on the wall. So now that the French have, uh, you know, basically gotten all this aggression out of their system. Uh, now we can work on, on, on pushing them back and re retaking this position. That's going to take a little time because this wall is a great defensive position and we're going to have to do it by shooting at them. Um, but at least, they, so you can see these guys are now not on the wall. They've withdrawn a little bit and they're getting shot in the flank. Um, but at least the aggression is out of their system in terms of now they're starting to fall back. Uh, and they cannot just charge and take Hugomont. They have to shoot out. You have to shoot us out of there in order to get Hugomont. Uh, so while they came in here very aggressive, uh, upon hitting the fort, they kind of had to stop and uh, you know engage in a firefight, which is a little more of what we want. So now we can kind of work on setting skirmishers out and trying to seek positions where we can shoot these guys off the wall and and reclaim it. So now that this unit has fallen back, we can retake this portion of the wall and start shooting at these guys, and we'll have the wall bonus as well, and we'll be shooting at these guys and these guys, as well as these guys and these guys, but these are our primary targets right here with the skirmisher unit. Uh, so these guys will be able to shoot pretty good. These guys are on the wall as well, so it's kind of an even firefight. Uh, and in the meantime, these guys, these French guys, are going to be inflicting heavy casualties on our units inside the fort. So we do want to get this unit off of the wall. And I have this skirmisher unit coming up to shoot at these guys as well. 
And the reason I can bring them so close is because I'm putting them on the flank of the skirmisher unit. And so I don't have to worry about the skirmisher unit shooting at them. They're shooting at the guys in the fort. Uh, so I can get them pretty close. And uh, you can see some of our these batteries here, I'm going to leave them here because there's not really much French art artillery opposing them. And the ones that are, are, are far away. So, uh, okay, we have finally basically brought in Bowden's Brigade to a halt after their very aggressive uh, charge into the woods here. And uh, now we're beginning to work on reclaiming the wall here. Uh, this skirmish unit has already reclaimed this part of the wall. Uh, these guys are holding well, uh, but we've got two skirmish units shooting at them now, as well as units in the fort. So temporarily we've stabilized the situation. We can now start to set up some of the rest of the right here. And I think the first thing I'm going to do is grab these two artillery batteries and send them out and put them between each of these three battalions. One battery here, one battery here. So if Pyre's cavalry uh, out here decides to move forward, I can form square with these units and it's basically a fortress formation set up already. Uh, and the other thing we're going to do after this is, like I said, we're going to... Uh, grab Chase's division at Brain Alude and bring them, uh, bring them over as well. And uh, you can see them there. It's a 7,000 man division with two artillery batteries. It's, it's nice and big. Uh, you know, almost, yeah, almost 7,000 men. And we're going to just deploy them back here uh, behind the ridge in, uh, in reserve just to have them here. And we'll put them in just line artillery front, which is a pretty standard divisional formation. And uh, we're going to grab one of these cavalry regiments, and um, we're going to bring them up and put them right behind this uh, this line here in case any infantry advances against this position. We, uh, with the cavalry, we could force them into square if we needed to. And uh, now we can go back to Hugomont and see how things are going. So a fierce firefight going on between my skirmish units on the wall and the French battalion that has gained a foothold on the wall. Uh, so we're shooting at them in the flank with uh, two of our skirmisher units, uh, and as well as the units we have inside Hugomont. Now the reason they're not just running, um, even though we're shooting them in the flank, is that they're on the wall and it's a massive, massive de defense bonus. So that even though they're being shot at in the flank, they're really not losing a lot of men because it doesn't matter, the unit facing doesn't matter so much uh, when it comes to defensive positions. As long as your flag is registering that you're in that defensive terrain, meaning you put the unit flag in that terrain, and this little area down here shows it, it the whole unit is considered to have that bonus, whether the actual sprites are outside that terrain or not. As long as the flag is in that terrain, you've got it. Uh, so the facing isn't as critical, and therefore the fact that it's flanking fire also isn't as critical. I mean, it helps a little bit, as flanking fire is wont to do, um, but it's just, it's almost inconsequential against that massive defense bonus uh, uh, of being on that wall. So with the situation stabilized at uh, Hugelmont, um, I'll begin doing some minor troop reshuffling. Uh, most of the stuff is stuff that's going to be going on behind the ridge, out of French view. Uh, got the 95th rifles in the gravel pit there. Uh, I'll leave them there for now, but if I see them start to take casualties, I'll pull them out. Um, like I said, the whole area forward of the ridge, this kind of whole area... We cannot be concerned with trying to defend that, because we're just going to take massive casualties from all these guns out here. All right, so already we've taken two casualties. We've inflicted 30, but we've already lost two, two, two artillery men. And we just don't have the guns to, to eat that, you know? So we're going to get them off the range. We're not going to compete with the Grand Battery. We cannot compete with the Grand Battery. Uh, we simply don't have the guns to do it with. Uh, they can, afford, they can afford to take artillery losses. We can't. Uh, so let's take a quick look at Papalot over here. And as you can see, we have one big unit 
inside the fort, and we're going to move the officer in there as well. And we're going to take this unit and put them in front of this area right here and have them form square. Uh, so that essentially, uh, the idea being they can, they can block this whole cavalry division, um, Jackano's division here, uh, from, from advancing. So just because there's nothing but cavalry there, and one square alone should do it. And there's another big French, uh, Dutch-Belgian unit inside this building here, and we're going to take them out and bring them over. Uh, I think initially we're just going to put them up behind the Allied lines, and later we will reinforce Papalot. Um, because before I commit more troops to Papalot, I want to see what the French uh, hit it with. Um, they always hit it with DeRay's division, but sometimes they just hit it with one brigade, like Bru's brigade, and the other brigade, uh, Pagats, they, they'll, they'll send forward with their lawn. But sometimes they send DeRay's whole division against Papalot, Bruce Brigade and uh, Pagat's Brigade, and so then I need to reinforce Papalot a little bit. Uh, so I'm, I'm not committing to that yet, I'm just waiting to see what it is they're going to do. So alright, we're starting to inflict a few casualties on, these, uh, on this French battalion that's sitting here on the wall. We've gotten uh, about two casualties with this unit and you know, probably about ten with this unit. Um, so slowly but surely we're whittling these guys down and eventually they will withdraw and uh, when they do we will take this unit and rush in and grab this wall again so three casualties little by little we're whittling that unit down And uh, just seeing what we got back here, as you can see, we have uh, you know a decent amount of reserves, a lot of a lot of cavalry, uh, a lot of infantry. But like I said, a lot of this cavalry and a lot of this infantry is not the same type, of, the same snuff, the same quality as you see level volunteer troops and militia troops. And there's a lot of garbage troops back here that if we can protect them from having to be engaged, um, it, it, it'll be a little bit better off. You know, this, this whole brigade right here, even though it's enormous, they're like, they're level three, militia, they're garbage. You can see it right there, militia, level three, they're absolute trash. You know, so we're just going to move them back behind the, the British lines, you know, and just uh, try and keep them out of trouble. You know, because a level three militia unit, it's like... If I set off a firecracker near them, they'll run. You know, they're just, they're, they're really garbage. And we'll lie them down, and uh, hopefully they can just sleep through the whole battle. And uh, we won't have to use them at all. And uh, you will periodically see me open the mini-map, and that's really just to take a look at the big picture and see what's happening uh, kind of all along the line at a glance. So yeah, initially I'm going to bring this uh, Nassau uh, Red uh, Battalion back behind the uh, lines just to have some more troops behind the lines and reinforcing the cavalry on our extreme left. These are crap troops too. They're level four volunteer. They're just they're they're, they're trash. So here we are back at Hugomont. You can see we have the Allied objective behind Hugomont as well as Hugomont. So. We're getting points both from Hugomont and from the Allied right, as well as La Haisant, as well as Papalot, as well as the Allied left. So, uh, the points, while all of this is going on, the points are just rolling in. So, uh, you can finally see that it looks like this, uh, this French battalion is starting to suffer enough losses. 
empty bodies here, and they are starting to back up. So, uh, yeah, like I said, this takes a while because uh, of the massive defense bones they have uh, for being on that wall. They're just not going to break and run that quickly. So uh, we got a supply wagon, and one of the things I'm going to do is bring a supply wagon right up in here because our intention is to hold this wall uh, as long as we possibly can and if possible for the whole scenario with these skirmisher units who will almost constantly be being engaged. Uh, so we want to actually have a dedicated supply wagon for these two skirmisher units because they're our main defense. They're screening the fort as well as uh, uh, inflicting much more casualties than they'll take because of that massive wall defense bonus. Uh, and we want to be able to just constantly keep them in, in ammo without thinking about it. So uh, you can see here comes Chase's division, uh, worming its way over to set up back here. And uh, that will bolster the, our, our extreme right uh, to within good comfort levels. You know, with Chase's division back there, I'm confident we'll be able to handle anything that might come that way. Uh, so we're still we're just we're just working on this unit right here. You know this unit has now inflicted five casualties on them. Uh, so you know little by little we're dropping men and uh, hopefully soon they will start to back off off of that wall uh, after sustaining a sufficient amount of losses. But like I said, it takes a lot longer than it would in a normal situation, especially uh, especially flanking them, just because of that massive wall wall bonus. It's just huge. So we're going to start grabbing supply wagons and distributing them uh, throughout the artillery batteries uh, because uh, for the next for the next couple hours at least it's going to be mostly our artillery uh, engaging along the line as uh, the first couple of hours the fighting is either at Hugomont or it's at Papalot. It's kind of in these confined areas. So here comes a French officer who has just gone and got himself killed by crossing the wall and and, uh, uh, and uh, getting killed by our, uh, by our skirmishers. I wonder if that was Bowden. <laughs> because historically, I, I think Bowden was killed at the walls of Le Mans. Uh, so it wouldn't surprise me if that was actually part of part of the attack script, that Bowden charges the wall and gets himself killed. Uh, since this is Bowden's brigade, I'm going to assume that's who it was. He would be the only officer. So yes, uh, Bowden is apparently dead. And so, all right, this unit has begun to fall back. This unit is withdrawing and no longer on the wall. So if we can get unit, this our unit on the wall, that should send these guys into a full retreat. Alrighty. So here we are. And I'll just click the three button to put them on the wall. There they go. Uh, now this should be almost an instantaneous retreat now for this battalion. Now they're facing skirmishers both on the wall uh, they should run. Time to go, boys. They're backing up fast. They're going to hit the bricks. There they go. All right, so we've regained the wall. And we've got a fresh skirmisher unit here. When one of these skirmisher units gets too fatigued, uh, we will replace them. These guys are good. So we've still got units in line set up in, in, in front of the fort here. Most of these, uh, most of these guys are, are, are shooting at the skirmishers. They're being screened by the skirmishers. Uh, the fort is being screened by the skirmishers. And we're replacing uh, this skirmisher unit that was on the wall firing for quite some time uh, with a fresh unit. And I do that a lot. I'm going to constantly cycle in fresh units uh, 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 on the wall here. So, all right, 
We've regained the wall. Bowden's brigade has uh, been pushed back. And uh, our guns have opened up on this side of the line over here. So we've got uh, two six-gun artillery batteries here that are uh, duking it out with these batteries back here, as well as probably taking some shots at the French cavalry over there. Uh, we have more guns over here, but we're going to hold them in reserve. So as you can see, we have taken more casualties than we've taken. Uh, than we've inflicted, but that was to be expected. Those guys were sitting on the wall for a long time with that bonus shooting at us. Alrighty. So, all right, guys, with the uh, with the situation stabilized here uh, at Hugo Mont, I'm gonna make a quick fridge run. I will be right back. All right, fellas, I am back. So it's uh, it's noon now. We're about a half hour into the battle. Um, we're still hotly engaged at Hugomont with uh, Bowden's brigade, but uh, their initial aggressiveness has been turned back, and we now have full possession of Hugomont as well as its defensive walls uh, in front of it. But uh, believe me, the French are far from done. This is just their opening, uh, their opening salvo, so to speak. So as you can see, here comes Soy's brigade, the uh, the other brigade in uh, the other brigade in, uh, in in Bonaparte's division. Uh, so now we're going to be tangling with two French brigades uh, at Hugo Mont. Bowden's brigade is still in good shape. You know, they have units back here that haven't really been engaged yet. And we have six fresh battalions coming at us. So, like I said, the French are far from done. So another French uh, battalion from Bowden's Brigade is pulling back, and uh, we will use the opportunity to do a little supply wagon run on our skirmishers here. All right, so Soy's division has parked itself just out of range, uh, and uh, it's probably waiting for their uh, assigned time to move forward. You can see we occupy La High Sant now, as well as Papillot. Nothing else happening along the French line so far. Cavalry is still sitting in place, and DeRay's division has not moved yet. And here's our battalion that we brought up from that uh, fort down by the, uh, the cavalry. And uh, we will uh, we will have them uh, deploy back behind these lines. So uh, I'm checking losses here, seeing who's getting shot at, who's who's in range of the uh, the French guns. So these guys have taken 35 losses. Let's see if we can move them back a bit behind the ridge. These guys have taken 16 losses. You know, nothing critical, but I'm just keeping an eye on who's getting hit by the guns because we want to try and minimize our losses and really not give the the Grand Battery anything to uh, you know to fixate on.
now obviously we can't stay like this once Durland's corps starts advancing because if we stay here and the French move forward they're gonna get the objective so really we're just staying here while uh, the bombardment is going on when the when the French move forward obviously we have to rise up and advance and cover the objective because that's that's one of the main objectives right here this this puppy here is worth 200 points a minute so that is definitely a main one so these guys are good and concealed these guys are concealed. So all these guys now are concealed behind the ridge. You can see none of them are taking any losses. Uh, and so the, the, the Grand Battery's fire is uh, largely wasted. And uh, that's pretty much the name of the game here. That was Wellington's strategy. Uh, I'm just taking it a little bit further by actually uh, completely withdrawing behind the ridge. And take a nap, fellas. All right, so we are nice and concealed now behind the uh, behind the ridge. And uh, let's again give a quick look at Hugo Mott. So as you can see now, uh, Soy's brigade has moved forward and are starting to move around the right side of Hugo Mott. Now that's a problem because as I've talked about before. One of the surest ways to start driving troops out of a fort like this is to start shooting at it from multiple sides. Uh, and and some of these some of these battalions of Soy's brigade are starting to move pretty damn close. And there's no wall here, so they're just going to be shooting it out directly with the fort. Um, and, uh, you know, the defensive value of the fort, you know, it lowers as the fort takes more and more damage. As you can already see, it's taken quite a bit of damage already. Uh, so, um, the more damage the fort takes, the less uh, of a, a defensive value it is uh, for our troops inside. Um, and so the, the, troops, the men inside who are in an all-around formation, and this is what, here we go. Routed panic units. This is what I was talking about with, uh, you know, these Dutch Belgian troops, man. God, do they want to run. You know, so off they go, and we're going to send some veteran troops uh, into the fort uh, to uh, start bolstering our, our, uh, our garrison inside. Because a lot of the troops that were deployed out here initially that we moved back into Yukamon, they're pretty crummy. They're pretty crummy troops. Uh... And so a lot of them will, they will be the first units to route out of the fort. Uh, so we've got a whole, whole bunch of French uh, out here shooting it out with us now. Uh, we're now dealing with Bowden's Brigade as well as uh, Soy's Brigade. So pretty much Jerome Bonaparte's uh, entire division is uh, shooting it out with us inside Hugo Mont. They've now brought, they've started to bring fire across multiple sides of the fort. And I'm going to have to think about what we're going to do about that, because that is a problem. So as you can see, our casualties are mounting inside the fort. Uh, the troops under McDonald's command, which, by the way, do not include any of the guard skirmisher units, either that I have on the wall or that I have on inside Yugamon itself. Uh, those are not reflected in when I click on Colonel McDonald. He only commanded those troops in the woods. However, his troops that are in Yugamon are taking more casualties than they inflict. Uh, so we're going to need to do something to try and help them out. And uh, I'm advancing another guard uh, infantry battalion. Um, and what I'm going to do is, uh, when I get them up back here, we'll detach skirmishers and send them around the right of Hugo Mont to try and start taking shots at uh, at battalions of Soy's Brigade. Uh, 
you know, I try to start shooting them in the flank and see if we can run at least these few units here off so that at least the fort is not taking fire at, uh, from multiple sides. You know, if we can keep the French forces bottled up in here so that they're largely shooting it out with our skirmishers on the wall, uh, that'll go a long way towards screening the fort. Because the, the troops on the wall just take very, very few losses uh, because of both the fact that they're skirmisher units and on top of that they have just a massive wall defense bonus. Um, and so as long as you keep cycling in fresh skirmisher units to, to man that wall, uh, in a firefight, they, they will massively get the better of it. So we here we have a, a giant uh, uh, British guard unit moving in behind our artillery battery, and uh, I really don't like this, that the, the, they're now shooting at, at, at a second side of the fort. Because it, it just means that the casualties inside the fort are going to mount if we keep allowing that to happen. So we are at 26,507 points. Uh, as I said, the, the, because of the, uh, 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 the amount of points these objectives are worth, coupled with how many of them we're currently holding, uh, the points just really, really rise rapidly. And that's important to do early on, uh, before the French war machine really gets moving. Uh, you want to try and really rack up as many points as, as, as possible uh, from just sitting there and collecting points from these objectives. Uh, so yeah, early on when we have we have all these objectives, we have Lyosant, the two the two objectives on the Allied line, uh, Hugomont, Papalot, you know, and all of those are just adding to our point total every single minute. We're getting close to a thousand points a minute. So okay, uh, I'm splitting off skirmishers now, and I'm going to attempt to start shooting at these units in the flank uh, and see if we can drive them back uh, so that. Hugomont is no longer taking fire from multiple sides. <coughs> so you can see our first skirmisher unit heading out, and I think I'm going to send two. And, uh, you know, there's some hedgerows here. If we can get our flag in them, we'll get a defensive terrain bonus and uh, be able to shoot these guys in the flank and hopefully get them out of there. And our guns are firing pretty, uh, pretty regularly, so let's do a quick supply wagon run. And uh, our skirmishers are just firing relentlessly, so let's uh, let's keep them in supply. So these guys have inflicted 91 casualties, and they've only taken five losses. That's what this wall bonus is doing for them. And these guys have inflicted 29 casualties, and uh, they haven't taken any. So again, this wall bonus is just awesome. It's like being on the Alamos. All right, we've set up on this unit's flank, and you can already see they are very, very quickly pulling back. And that was what I was hoping to do. Get those units out of there so that they cannot bring fire on multiple sides of Hugo Mon. The longer we can keep that from happening, the better the uh, chance the fort has of holding. guys are beginning to back up and that is usually the first sign in the we're getting ready to run maneuver. And we're still duking it out with two battalions in front of Hugomont as well as one a little further back.
and we also have a lot of artillery support behind Hugomont. We just want to do supply wagon runs and, and keep them firing. So uh, these guys are still continuing to fall back uh, from our skirmisher fire on their flank. Uh, and this battery on the left here, uh, once, uh, once Soy's brigade deployed further, uh, further on this side of Hugomont, they were able to both unlimber and, and uh, they're probably targeting these guys. So still continuing to fall back, but they haven't retreated yet. They are being very stubborn. Because, uh, you know, bringing fire against multiple sides of a fort is the best way to try and get units out. So it doesn't look like any of Derlon, Derlon's corps, or what we can see of them, has, uh, has started moving yet. So let's see if we can start advancing through these hedgerows and really start to put the pressure on this unit and get them to break. Because even though they're withdrawing, they're still putting fire on, on the second side of Higamon here, and we don't want that to happen. because some of those crap troops inside Hugomont will break and run. And I've got some Coldstream Guard uh, skirmisher units inside there too, and they're much less likely to break and run because uh, they're much higher quality troops, but even they will eventually break if they're not protected. All right, so finally this unit has withdrawn a little bit. But not, not enough, in my opinion. So we're going to keep advancing these skirmisher units and try and keep shooting it out with these guys and get them to withdraw. And they're trying to come forward again. They're very, very stubborn units. So we're going to bring my second skirmisher unit up, too, and really start to put a lot of muskets to them. Because uh, they're, they're really intent on uh, trying to keep this fire up on the second side of people on here. Uh, meanwhile, a lot of Bowden's brigade has pulled back from the... From uh, from the east side of Hugomont here. That wall is, uh, that wall is a bitch. No doubt about it. Alright, so we're much closer now, and we've got two skirmisher units firing on their flank. So, uh, you know, I don't know how much longer that unit can stand there and just be stubborn. Uh, our casualties are still mounting in Hugomont because we cannot get this unit, uh, we cannot get this unit out of here. We have, uh, about 4,200 points, though, because it's a 100 point per minute, uh, objective, and as long as we're holding it, uh, we're still racking up a lot of points. So uh, I have a lot of, uh, almost too many Coldstream Guard skirmisher units in here. And uh, I, I've got one of those glitches where you put units into the fort and, uh, you know, they never stop moving. So you can see they're exhausted even though they're, rest you know, they're just moving. So I'm recalling some, any of these skirmisher units that I see uh, in a moving state. Uh, like and their fatigue is dropped like this. I'm actually recalling them Because that that happens sometimes when you have too many too many units inside a fort or something not that they're anywhere close to capacity, but just uh, You know sometimes you put units in and they just stay in a moving state even though they're not moving and their fatigue drops it's some kind of bug. I've, I've never been able to figure out why it happens. Um, but yeah, sometimes you, if you put units inside a fort, instead of saying resting or like this, uh, it, it will just continue to say moving and it will uh, extract their fatigue like they're moving, even though they're not. And the only real recourse you have is to pull them out of the fort uh, in order to stop that from happening. 
so, but things are starting to quiet down a little bit over here. Uh, Bowden's brigade has uh, kind of pulled back. We're still engaged with one unit uh, uh, here, but you know most of their brigade has, has pulled back at this point. Uh, Soy's brigade is still going over here, but a lot of them are not engaged. And we are still trying to shoot these guys out of here. They're being very stubborn. I know they're taking a lot of losses, and we're not taking many losses at all because we're skirmisher units, and we're also inside these hedgerows. Um, but, uh, yeah, they're being very, very stubborn as far as not giving up that position. All right, so these guys are starting... These, these 95th rifles are starting to take casualties now, uh, laying in that gravel pit. Uh, and there's just no reason for them to. You know, even though they're not going to take many casualties, the gravel pit is a pretty good defensive terrain bonus. Um, but there's just no reason for them to be out there, so let's pull them back. Uh, because, you know, eventually when units start routing out of Lahaye Sant from artillery fire, we're going to need to replace them to stay above the number of troops we need inside the fort to maintain the objective. So the 95th Rifles will be a good unit to send into Lahaye Sant at that point. And uh, we're going to also get these guns off the line and pull them back and, and put them between our, our infantry uh, and uh, uh, set up a, a defensive position back here. So when Durlan's troops come forward and they crest this ridge, we are going to have a warm, warm greeting for them. So we'll get this unit out of here and move this battery back here. Doing some slight reshuffling. Things are pretty stable at Hugomont right now, so I'm confident that I can look away for a few minutes and start setting the, the my my center up. Because I know Derlon's attack is coming sooner or later, and I do have to get ready for it. You know, I just had to deal with that initial rush of, uh, of Bonaparte's division uh, at, at Hugomont, you know. But uh, it started to, it's starting to settle down now. Uh, so we can, uh, we can afford to uh, start setting up our center here. And again, I'm just making sure that my deployments are indeed behind the ridge and that they're not taking casualties from the Grand Battery. And uh, we can see DeRay's division is still not moving, and we can observe them nicely from uh, from Papalot. Some of the guns are falling off the Grand Battery, as is wont to happen when you have this many guns deployed on the line. Uh, the supply wagon simply can't keep up with them. And so when some of the guns run out of ammo, they fall off the line. So, uh, yeah, we've already taken 95 casualties here uh, uh, in, in La Haye Sant. But we've scored 4,800 points. So, okay, back here at Hugomont again. And still these skirmish units who are kicking ass. I mean, this, they're inflicting massive casualties on these units. And still they will not give up uh, firing at Hugomont. I mean, I admire their courage. But come on, guys. You're taking massive losses from these skirmishers. Time to pull back. They're just not getting the hint. And we also see another column coming on our right flank here, so we're going to have to refuse our skirmisher units a little bit uh, to face them as well. And uh, these guys will continue shooting at these guys. And uh, these guys here are still also shooting at these guys. But they're also ready to face these guys. And this... this Two gun batteries lined up in a nice straight line here, so we can just do a straight supply wagon run and just uh, and and resupply the whole line, and we can do the same thing with these guys. Uh, again, more routed units. Uh, however, this is one of those. Uh, even though that's a Coldstream Guard regiment withdrawing, running away, that was one of the initial 
uh, guard regiments that both started out out here, and then we had them in the hedgerows, and they've been in there a long time. So even though they're veteran, uh, they were only a 50-man unit to start with. They were down to 37. They were probably out of ammo, so I can forgive them for running away. So uh, these units are, again, inflicting great casualties. Um, however, they're starting to get a little tired, so we're going to split off new skirmisher units to take their place on the wall. And this is something you'll see me do a lot, uh, just to keep fresh units in, on the wall. It's not really a matter of ammo, I just want to keep, uh, make sure these units have high morale and high fatigue. So we'll just cycle in new skirmisher units and recall the old ones. All right, so these guys have parked themselves off our right flank, but they're no threat. They're just sitting there in column. And these guys are finally starting to back up. I mean, wow, they, take a, they took a lot of losses, that, that battalion. I mean, they really stood there and, and gave it their all for a long time. So we can see uh, more of these units falling back. They're just one by one falling away from the line now. So uh, Bowden's brigade has almost completely been repulsed now. And uh, with, the, with the breaking of these two units uh, in front of us, now is a good time to swap out our skirmishers. So uh, there's no units in front of them engaging right now, so we can... Uh, we can go and move them and, and to take up the wall position and recall uh, recall our old skirmisher units that are a little tired now. So finally these guys have broken and run. Uh, and, and we've relieved the fire on Hugo Mont. And these guys are withdrawing as well. So uh, Hugo Mont is uh, largely safe for now as we've uh, repulsed a lot of the, uh, the, the fire in the front as well as uh, on, on its flank. However, the remaining uh, remainder of Soy's brigade is now starting to move in. But now that I've got those skirmisher units out there, um, that's a position I want to hold on to because any unit that tries to move into this position, I'm going to be able to shoot at them with skirmishers. So we've got three more battalions moving in. And uh, I'm going to move these skirmishers up to shoot at them. Or oh, I thought I was going to. So, all right, the rest of uh, Soy's brigade has been committed here. But now we have fresh skirmisher units on the wall. DeRay's division is still sitting quiet. And I'm just sending a supply wagon out here to resupply these skirmisher units. Maybe that's why I haven't moved them forward. I'm probably waiting for them to be resupplied. You see some of them, they're down to 15 rounds. But uh, no, I'm inching them forward a bit. I want them to engage all these units and this unit. But I also want to resupply them because they're down to about 14 rounds. And because these supply wagons are standing right there, they'll always be very close. So, all right, we're putting back our other skirmisher unit and advancing uh, our fresh one here. Get them on the wall. And then they are. Hit the three button and up they go. They are now on the wall and engaging the units in front of them. So. Uh, We've now got fresh skirmisher units on the wall. And we've recalled the old ones uh, to the parent unit. And that's why I keep that unit there. I can keep splitting off skirmisher units, recalling them, splitting them off as I need them. So uh, let's use a supply wagon here and resupply these skirmisher units. And 
and uh, as soon as these guys get here, these guys should go up. Why aren't you guys resupplying? The supply wagon is right next to you. Where must I go to resupply, you fools? Okay, there we go. Now they're back up to 35 rounds, and we can get the supply wagon out of there, because that is a hot spot right there. We don't really want a supply wagon up there for too long. So, uh, another unit of Bowden's Brigade is falling back. I believe that's the last one. And we're tangling with the three other units of Soy's Brigade. Bowden's Brigade has pretty much all fallen back now. And uh, we're continuing to duke it out with uh, these units over here. We've got the skirmisher units firing at them. Still all quiet along the main French line. We're still just dealing with the fighting at Hougoumont. I just want to reposition these guys a little bit better. Bring them off the wall and then re-advance them onto the wall. That's better. That looks a lot better. So, pretty much all quiet along our extreme right. Just an artillery duel going on. Pretty much all the fighting so far is centered at Hougoumont. And uh, that, was, uh, that was really a good move to put these skirmisher units out here and, and actually screen the side of the fort from being attacked so that, uh, you know, the only place they really can fire directly on the fort is uh, basically in here, in the gap in the wall, but, you know, where the wall ends here. Um, you know, and it's... It, firing at only one side of the fort is, uh, <clears throat> you know, going to take... It, it, Especially with all these units in here, it's it's, it's not going to shoot them out of there. You'll you'll route one unit here and there, but uh, so we've got forty one thousand seven hundred nineteen points, almost halfway to the amount of points we need, uh, and uh, I believe the ball game is uh, just about over for this episode here. We're going to stop it at twelve thirty, and uh, that will be the first hour of the battle. So almost 42,000 points in the first hour. So as you can see, it's possible to really rack up a lot of points in this scenario. All right, guys, so that's it. Uh, that is the, uh, the first part of our playthrough of the Battle of Waterloo as uh, the forces under Wellington. And uh, when next we come back, we will start the two-hour uh, two uh, videos. So uh, all right, guys, that's it. Uh, until, uh, until next time, take it easy.